if it wasn't for their music, there'd be no, no such thing as hip hop or jungle or modern day R&B, or even disco for that matter. The accidental heroes of early hip hop, surprisingly, came from Britain. London band Simande broke up in the 70s, but their music was rediscovered and shot to prominence in the early 90s after being sampled by hip hop pioneers De La Soul, the Fugees, and the Wu Tang Clan. On a, on a pirate station, that's why I play them. DJ Norman J recognised their unique sound and used to play their music on pirate radio in London in the 80s. That's proto hip hop. You know, before there's such a thing called hip hop. You know, go online, YouTube, check it, and, you think, and then you'll go, ah, it's a penny drop moment. I see. Caribbean immigrants Patrick Patterson and Steve Scipio first formed the band in South London in the 70s. We became friends in 1963, um, had a mutual interest in music and started developing uh, that interest. After playing gigs around London, a producer heard their music and signed them up to an independent label. They released their first album in 1972. The band landed a tour in the United States with soul musician Al Green. We did the Apollo uh, in Harlem, which was, as I say, a very heady time for the band. You know, um, I wouldn't say it was wholly unexpected because we always had ambition and aspirations. So getting that opportunity was really very, um, very important for us. When you got back to the UK after that heady period, as you call it, were the phones going off the hook? Well, it seems as if the phones have been thrown in the dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to say that the music industry in the United Kingdom was not fair to us. It was not fair to all the black bands of the, the time. It was difficult to, to, to get access and difficult to get exposure. A recently released documentary about the band tells the story of Simande's struggle to break through in 1970s London, a time of high political tension. It's a tragedy for Britain, a tragedy for the British people. We do not have sufficient houses, jobs and schools for our own people, let alone immigrants. In 1975, Simande became disillusioned and disbanded. There's no good reason at that time for banging our heads against the wall, so to speak. We decided to take the band off the road for a while. While Patrick Patterson and Steve Scipio went on to train as lawyers, their records began a life of their own in America. Hip-hop artists were discovering Samande's music, mining vinyl collections, to create some of the first samples used in hip-hop. For early hip-hop artists, Simande's first album became legendary. Play that one part on this side, mix it on that side, mix it back and forth. Now we got something. And that was like the beginning stages of what we know right now is hip-hop. Here, Samande's track, Bra, is transformed into a 1990s original hip-hop beat. The break became the whole record for us. The 11 DJs who started disco. We all played that. Documentary filmmaker Tim Mackenzie Smith discovered the band's music decades ago and was hooked. It wasn't about PR, it wasn't about advertising, it wasn't about marketing. It was purely on the basis of different generations of people all over the world picking up on it and finding something they loved in it. Two decades after the band split, Samande's song Dub featured in American hip hop trio The Fugees' number one album. My children were connecting with the music uh, before I, <laughs> before I did, because um, they were listening to that kind of music. I wasn't so much listening to it. I mean, I was heavily uh, practicing at, at law at the time, as was Patrick. On the mix one time. De La Soul and Gangsta also mined the Samande Sacred Crate. Once again, it's time to buy more soul. Flavor you will save it in your soul. But it wasn't just American artists repurposing Samande tracks. The music also featured in French rapper MC Solar's song Bouge de la, known as France's first hip hop hit. So we thought that was great for us, you know, because it, it was giving a 
fresh exposure to the music and also currency to the music. Now, 50 years later, Simande is back on the road, selling out shows in Australia and exposing a new generation to their unique music. We've done what, we, what is clearly half of an album already. So when we go back to the United Kingdom, we're going to complete that mission. The most important thing, as you would know, is the fact that um, the hip-hop community found in our music something that inspired them. It's a great thing. You can still go on.